Welcome to the Top Employer Certification Dinner, a celebration of the top employers in South Africa and the continent. Africa's top employers all descended on Johannesburg, South Africa to see who would walk away with the coveted prize of Top Employer 2014. Headquartered in the Netherlands, the Top Employers Institute, previously known as the CRF Institute, has recognized top employers around the world since 1991. We believe that we need to develop, we need to continue to improve our services to you. And we do that through various me methods. We annually improve our methodology. We apply more stringent audits. This year, some of you were visited by us, were visited by Grant Thornton, to, where we come over and check the answers that you've given. The documents that you send in are checked. Each one individually are checked to make sure that what you say in the questionnaire, in the survey, is actually truly a policy that is in place. Those are changes that result actually in a stronger certification, but also result in less companies actually making the certification. We see that year in, year out, um, and that's something we believe is necessary to give you a certification that means something to you. Last year, we started for the first time with Top Employers Africa, <clears throat> and with 35 companies represented from the African continent. This year that has grown to 45 companies that are represented and have sought the certification on a uh, continental basis. That's something that we haven't seen as strong even in country, countries where we've been for a longer time. That growth and that appetite for certification is really big in Africa and we see that as an example for the rest of the world. The good news is that we also see it developing rapidly now in Asia Pacific, and that's also why we are developing into the Northern American market um, to start our certification. Last year, when I was here, just a couple of blocks away when we had our certification dinner, we were proud to announce that we were in the process of certifying over 750 companies in 45 countries. Now, we can't announce it yet, because they're not all certified yet, but we're in the process of certifying over 850 companies together in almost 70 countries. Nowhere is the pursuit of top employers more necessary and in many aspects more complex than in this beautiful continent of ours. 54 independent states, over 3,000 different cultures and traditions. It truly is a complex environment. The following organizations are top employers in Africa, and each of the named subsidiaries will carry the Continental Certification Seal. Your applause, ladies and gentlemen, for a top employer in Angola, Mozambique, South Africa, Zambia, and Zimbabwe. Please put your hands together for British American Tobacco. Having the external recognition really for us confirms what we believe we are. And so, you know, I think for our employees, it's really great to have that external recognition because it's something to be really proud of. Top employer in Botswana, Cameroon, Cote d'Ivoire, the DRC, Kenya, Malawi, Morocco, Mozambique, Nigeria, South Africa, and Zambia. A warm round of applause for G4S. Certified in Egypt, Kenya, Nigeria, South Africa, please put your hands together for Microsoft. <music> Top employer in Europe, and now in 2014, in Cote d'Ivoire, Mali, Egypt, Senegal, and Uganda. Please welcome Orange, whose executives join us tonight from Egypt, Senegal, and France. A warm round of applause for Orange.
So thanks to our Orange Campus programs, we have specific dedicated skills uh, and we can help and support our managers to give their best for them to help their employees to develop themselves and to be more close, to be closer to our employees' needs and to our managers' needs in Africa. Ladies and gentlemen, there is one more company certified as a top employer in Africa. Not only are they certified, they are the top-ranked employer on the continent. They're certified in Côte d'Ivoire, Kenya, Nigeria, and South Africa. It gives me great pleasure to welcome, and I've had the privilege of doing business with him and his team, to the stage, the one and only Fungwa Serima, the CEO of SAP Africa. First of all, I'm, I'm really excited to be associated with the um, top employer organization. And not only that, uh, I've seen some very interesting organization coming up here, and I think it's important that we give them all another round of applause, please. Yes. So, on behalf of the team and my team uh, across the continent, I'm, I'm greatly humbled to receive this. This means a lot for us. Uh, as SAP, we have always said that we want to make sure that Africa runs SAP. And uh, at the best of that, there's nothing that is as important as this. We know that uh, what makes us as an organization is not the organization by definition, it's the people. And it's important that we respect, we give our own people an opportunity to be able to excel. And that can only come if your HR policies, the organization is set up well, the environment is hospitable enough for your people to be able to excel, and we believe that as SAP we've given our people that, and we'll continue to excel to do that across the continent. After the ad break, we find out which of the companies are certified top employers in South Africa, an exclusive group made up of the country's leading employees that span across different industries. Plus, we reveal South Africa's top employer. Stay tuned. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It's time to present the official certification award to each one of the companies certified as a top employer, South Africa, 2014. As with top employers, Africa, all participating companies were required to complete an HR best practice survey under the top five topics on HR policy. After a rigorous validation, documentation, and verification, on-site audit, and finally, external audit program, these companies that scored 60% or more of the overall number one company's scores are certified as top employers in South Africa for the year 2014. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, in the number three spot and number one top employer in the professional services industry, congratulations to my family and the one and only EY. Please welcome to the stage, Ajen Sita. I think uh, just on behalf of all of my uh, colleagues here this evening and, and all of us at EY, a sincere thank you for this recognition. You know, being uh, number one in our profession, uh, three overall, a top employer in Africa, you know, amongst the company of such great uh, organizations here today is truly humbling. And it really is a strong statement for our own people and our clients that with EY, you get the highest performing teams. And I can tell you that recognition like this really will motivate us to make sure that we keep innovating and we keep building a better working world. Thank you. At the number two spot, two. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage 
and congratulate Nestle! I'm really humbled by this uh, recognition. Um, it's really been a journey for us. You know, at some point we were the top 30, and then we moved into the top 20, and then into the top 10, and today we are the best strong number two. We are really appreciative of this. In a way, this is a validation of the notion that we are really one of the best companies in South Africa, and there is more to life at Nestle. First in manufacturing, first in FMCG, and the number one top employer in South Africa today. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for the global brand that is Unilever! Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I am so proud um, to be receiving this prestigious award tonight. But it wouldn't have been uh, possible without a number of hard work and dedication from a number of people. So firstly, I'd like to thank the Unilever board who are here tonight for all their efforts in pu putting all the changes we wanted to put in place in the organization. To all our employees, um, we listened to their feedback um, and we made a number of changes. To the top employers, I would like to congratulate all the companies on their top certification, but especially to the top 10 for raising the standard for all. We move on to our panel discussion. I'd like to know from you, Antoinette, what specifically are the key challenges to the top employership in the, in, in the FMCG industry, and more specifically for Unilever? What are those key challenges? So let me start by saying many of us know um, Unilever for the brands, but the reality, um, like Nestle, we're a manufacturer. So one of our biggest challenges is keeping actually our shop floor and our unions engaged and motivated and keeping our productivity up. The second one is, of course, um, and no surprise, the war for talent. Um, and in my travels all over uh, the world through Unilever, um, South Africa remains one of what we call the hottest markets next to Brazil, China, India, and some other places. So that, that remains, as we all know as employers, an, an absolute prerogative uh, to us. So we have to stay on our toes, um, and we have to put in place both development, um, succession planning, and various employee practices that actually retain our talent. So I'm keen to know, because I, I understand that you're driving an aggressive employer brand campaign in South Africa, not only in South Africa, but the rest of the continent as well. I mean, I'm keen to know, and I'm sure the audience is very keen to know, what this, what this certification means, what this accolade means for Unilever in terms of achieving this. So um, Unilever, again, is really known for our brands and all um, the consumers, the millions of consumers um, that use our brands every day. But internally, this really will reinforce um, our reputation with our employees, um, that it is a great place to work. And to actually be number one um, in South Africa for an FMCG company is absolutely phenomenal, especially with the competition um, that we've, we've had for the last few years. Secondly, um, we're very active um, on campus, as many of you will know, all over South Africa and into Africa. Um, so this is a wonderful platform for us to position ourselves as an employer of choice. David, I'd like to bring you in here. I'd like to bring you in. Um, um, so what industries do you witness as those with consistently top performing companies on average, right, across the global projects that you're doing? And, and more importantly, why do you think that is? Well, in fact, I don't think there's one industry standing out as such. If you look all around the world, we have projects similar to the South African projects, and we see companies from all industries competing to get the certification. And it varies here tonight. We have obviously Unilever that achieved the highest score. Um, in, in Brazil right now, it's a pharmaceutical company from Japan, Dekida. It's a packaging company in Italy, Tetra Pak. It's KFC in the UK. So it's basically, there's no real trend in terms of industries. All those companies that take their talent serious, that invest in them, can achieve the best results 
in our certification process. Uh, Bubble Boss, if you would, um, I'd, I'd like to ask you a question. So it's, you know, well done to you and the team again at Nestle, and it's, isn't it a phenomenal year for the guys in FMCG? Well done, guys, well done. Thank you. Um, and this is, of course, the first uh, top three ranking for Nestle, um, also a long time, you know, five years certified top employer. So you've been in this process for a really, really long time. So I, I'd like to know this from you. You're, you're well regarded for your green commitment, and we all know about the green story around the building. We've all seen it. It's, it's commitment to being uh, environmentally sustainable. We've got a picture up on screen. The new uh, Nestle building in Bryson is a great example of this commitment. So here's my question. How was the creation of this green working environment facilitated by HR policy? Um, I, I think the first thing really to mention is that uh, we were part of the design committee. Um, and I must stress, um, we were not part of the design committee to take minutes. Um, as normally you would um, expect, ex you know, expect from HR people, but we really had an influence in terms of uh, what we expect from the building. So we were very clear, uh, paramount to the design of the building is to create an environment that inspires people, that, inspire, that inspires uh, connection between colleagues, um, that inspires high performance. So in a way, that steered the, 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 the discussion away from creating a building that is beautiful, um, you know, but rather towards a, a discussion that uh, uh, seeks to, to say that we need to create a building that really takes care of what we really, what is the kind of environment that we need to create for our employees. So paramount to this whole discussion was the reality that or the fact that we have to really put people first before we talk about how structurally the building has to be designed. So. You, you, for example, if I can sh just share with you, I mean, one of the key things that we have to consider, you know, do we have to have, um, uh, you know, as a nutrition uh, health and wellness company, do we have to have breastfeeding facilities uh, for our, uh, for our, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, breastfeeding moms, for example, you know, do we create an environment where, you know, we, you know, people are not, you know, you know, subjected to uh, high levels of uh, recycled air from air conditioned, but instead we can, you know, find a way to provide uh, opportunities for, you know, for fresh air to come into the building so that we can dilute, um, you know, this uh, in a way toxic. Um, air that comes from the air quality. So there were a lot of things that we had to consider. This creates the sense of well-being, and it's part of our strategy to create a, you know, some kind of a well-being or work-life balance for our employees. So there was a lot of influence from HR, I think, from that perspective. It's interesting, isn't it, uh, to throw it back, because I know, Jane, you're busy with a project at the moment around uh, your own building, and I'll bring you into the discussion in a moment. But my final question, but we'll see if I may, is, so has this has an, had an impact in terms of your employee wellness and engagement in the business? Well, if you talk about engagement, I can just share with you, I mean, uh, some statistics which would be very interesting. In the old building in Runbeck, which was really a landmark building in, the, in Runbeck, a uh, seven-story, eight-story building, uh, gray, uh, quite depressing. In fact, that building almost made me decide not to join the organization. Um, you know, <laughs> you know, but... You know, we had an effectiveness uh, survey uh, uh, that we do almost, employee effectiveness survey that we do almost every year. And uh, in the years that we were in that building, we never really achieved any uh, scores above 50%. And uh, since we moved into the new building, I can just share with you that um, uh, our scores uh, dramatically increased. In fact, in 2012, uh, our employee effectiveness index, which is basically a measure of enablement and engagement, uh, we scored uh, slightly above the global high performance norm. And uh, we started experiencing this uh, positive, uh, I think, uh, uh, reaction and appreciation from our employees uh, from the time we moved into the new buildings. I mean, obviously, there are many other variables that you have to consider, but that has a very big impact in terms of uh, how employees feel. And, and the f we connect more in this building than we used to connect in that seven-story depressing building we had before. Thank you, thank you for that, very insightful. Uh, David, I'd like to bring you in here, um, again, if I could. So, uh, you know, running a business in, throughout the continent is, is taxing, as we've already understood. I want to know, if, what is, in your view, the key challenge that multinationals face in terms of HR implementation across the various regions and the beautiful continent within which we live? One of the things that I already mentioned in my earlier speech is that 
Many companies have great HR policies, great employee conditions thought out at headquarters. But to bring that to all these countries with various cultures, with different ways of working, with all kinds of difference that make that more difficult, um, that, I see, that is what we see as the biggest challenge. Um, here on stage we see amongst the group of eight top doors Africa already three represented that are able to do that because only if you are able to apply those policies around all your subsidiaries around the continent, then you can be a top employer. And so some companies are able already to master that challenge, but that's the greatest that we see um, for the international companies. Brother Sita, I'd like to bring you in here, if I could. Uh, you've been uh, ranked as a top employer in South Africa, you've been in the top 10 uh, for some years now. So you, you've really been in this process for a long, long time. I want to know from you, to what extent can you contribute the organization's performance to the leadership vision within your business? Yeah, we see there's, there's no doubt in my mind, you know, if you don't have people working with purpose, uh, working for a vision, in our case we define that vision as uh, building a better working world. If you don't have people working for a purpose, what they will work for is money and incentives. And what we try to create is an environment where there's an initiative for work, not just work for the sake of money. And when you have a real purpose, like building a better working world for people, for clients, for communities, it's making a real difference in the world in which we operate. And you can get the entire organization across the continent and across the globe connected into that vision, feeling that purpose and feeling the difference that they make in their own, in their own lives and the communities on a daily basis. That's when you get to higher purpose. That's when you get inspiration coming, coming across in the organization on a daily basis. So there's no doubt that you know, as, a, as a leadership team, we recognize that we've got to make sure that every single person in our organization can find purpose, can find meaning in the work that they do, and can see a future, can see career development, and what we've uh, embedded is, is a program called EYU, which stands for EY and U, or EY University. So it's a commitment to real personal development, ultimately contributing to the purpose and vision, and there's no doubt it's contributing to our success. So, David, I'd like to throw back to you. The companies that are represented here today, your overall group of certified employers around the world, are almost by definition large, okay, and often multinational businesses. Uh, how do you actually help organizations that are smaller and maybe less sophisticated to create optimal conditions for their people? Because naturally they want that too. And it's important in terms of their growth and long-term development to create those kind of conditions for their people. Um, as many of you know, there are entrance criteria to this program. Um, you have to be either a global player with more than 2,500 employees or locally active with 250 and more. And we do that because we believe that those companies have more opportunities to offer to their employees and that's why we have chosen these basically borders for our project. But that doesn't really say that we don't have an eye for the wider world. And as I said before, um, we want to develop always, and we want to take it further. So right now, we're in the process of setting up a foundation, the Top Employers Foundation. Our name it was very easy for that one. The Top Employers Foundation, where we are actually going to call upon you, the community, the network of top employers around the world, to help other companies that may not have the same opportunities you have, that may not be in an advanced position like all of us are over here, to help them create the right employee conditions. And that could be through smaller projects in countries around the African continent, but it will simultaneously take place in Asia, in Eastern Europe, in Southern America, and everywhere around the, around the world. We want to tap into your knowledge and activate that experience to help other companies. That's pretty much what I'm going to say about that, and also because we have still dessert waiting and it's been a long evening. Um, and also because we're in the phase of developing it right now, and we'll launch it come January. So at the kickoff of our next project, we'll definitely be able to tell you more about it come February. So It sounds you. absolutely exciting. So I can imagine if um, some of the audience want to find out more about it, they can come to you just as we have some dessert. Is that okay? Absolutely. Very good. Thank you. Thank you so much to our panelists. They've done a warm round of applause. 
That's a wrap of this year's Top Employers Awards. To find out more or to see the full list of certified Top Employers 2014, visit www.top-employers.com.